All right. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, on a cloudy afternoon here uh, around the New York, New Jersey area. Um, this is um, Clueless A Trading Frank. We have uh, two uh, terrific, uh, uh, I would say, newish members. Uh, not the recent from the last week or two, but uh, uh, that'll be great. Uh, some of them uh, managed to show up. Uh, today is uh, July 23rd, 2017. Wow, it's almost the end of the month. Um, half the year is gone. And approximately 3.27 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The session will be recorded and uploaded to the Clueless Aid Trading YouTube channel for everyone's benefit and viewing. And I highly suggest that people do that, especially the newer members uh, who are uh, uh, who are um, trying to understand the dynamics of Clueless Aid Trading and uh, charts and all that kind of good stuff, trade alerts and while we're doing some big numbers in difficult markets. Um, so that's what the topic is. It's an open-ended forum uh, webinar today. Uh, I'll be entertaining more of the Q&A stuff uh, than going over my, um, uh, my uh, 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 more tactical uh, in-depth charts. And a very important reminder that the regular advanced coaching session known as ACS will be held tonight, approximately, I would say around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which will give us enough time to be live with the markets, with the Globex um, futures markets trading. So we'll know whether or not we're going into the abyss or things are going to be okay for this coming Monday. Okay, on that note, we shall begin. Um, we have uh, Sir Frappa uh, and we have uh, B Badger here in attendance. And feel free to shoot away with any questions you'd like. So the first, uh, so as I mentioned uh, before, um, I'm trying to get down to the basics of many different things, the basics of chart analysis and the basics. And I want to keep this session somewhat short, not long-winded, so it's straight to the point. Um, of of charts which are directly related to what we do on the front side, which is the trading side. A very simple, couple of very simple uh, rules to follow. Okay, uh, and 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 couple of simple truths. How about that? Um, simple truth is that we never know what markets are going to do. Markets are a complete matrix of fundamentals, technicals, uh, noise, which is external news. Some of them are very relevant to the markets, a lot of them which are not, uh, and all of them fall into this hot boiling pot, which is called the market trading day. It kicks off at 9.30 a.m. Uh, for regular traders, kicks off at approximately 6 uh, uh, a.m. or so. Well, overnight traders can trade from 6 p.m. Uh, the night before. I mean, on on a, on a, on a uh, starting of the week from Sunday, 6 p.m., Globex futures start trading. And uh, the bottom line is that when you put all of these in a boiling pot, uh, things get uh, pretty heated, uh, and the uh, and and the and the machines that run the market, which dominate roughly anywhere from on a given day, I would say 70 to 80 percent plus, if not 90 percent on certain days, uh, and the market volume is dominated by algo. HFT, that's short for Algorithmic High Frequency Trading Programs. I have some terrific, terrific articles. Uh, and these are not just articles. These are real knowledge, fact-based stuff that goes on uh, with these machines. Uh, and you are have a real conundrum of um, movement known as volatility. So that's the basics of it. Volatility simply means volatile. And volatility is not, in my opinion, if you know the right way of doing it, which is what I try to do every single day and, and share and teach with my members um, and traders, is not to be feared. It doesn't mean you're not going to feel uncomfortable. Of course, if the market, you know, doing great on a trade, all of a sudden, big red candle comes in and uh, all of a sudden your trade that's up 20, 30 percent intraday drops down to 30 percent. Of course, you're going to feel uncomfortable. You know, every single red candle, if you're on the long side, means that you're losing value, at least on paper. So one of the other simple truths that I always follow is what happens on your PL or profit and loss statement on a given 15 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute, one hour basis have, has no relevance whatsoever as to where you're going to go or what, or what profits you're going to make. We see this happen every single day, what I call standard volatility or structured volatility. So when you get these type of uh, uh, movements all of a sudden because of some new event uh, like the news breaking that 
Trump Jr. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 was in the uh, Russian lawyer's office and the market suddenly drops uh, hard. And that was actually a, you know, before this, actually, and it was a bigger drop. It doesn't mean the world's going to end. So what we try to do with our charts, and I do it consistently, all, real time, all through the day, if not more on, 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 uh, or at the end of the uh, end of the day after the market closes or pre-market, is structure the levels that the markets can fall to. Markets are not random. There's an old saying. I mean, there's a famous book by Malkiel, uh, which says the random walk through Wall Street, which was the Bible of every single Wall Streeter back in the days. Well, we're not back in the days. You know, we are move, we are in a completely new paradigm. I'm not saying, you know, that things are not random. What I'm basically saying is it's structured randomness. And structured randomness means that if you're going to fall, you're going to basically hit certain levels, you're going to bounce for, you're going to fall. It's not the end of the world. You're going to bounce from there. You're going to fall. You're going to bounce from there. You're going to rise. You're going to hit the upper channel. You're going to pull back a bit, meander along, try to hit that upper channel again, fail, fall. And you know what? This is going to continue. And let me just give you the ultimate truth. It is going to be enhanced. It is going to increase. Volatility is going to increase as we go forward. This is the new paradigm, the new normal that was coined by uh, 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 the gentleman. Um, what's his name? Uh, gee, I forget his name. He's a very smart gentleman from PIMCO and Harvard Endowment way back. Uh, Mohammed El Aryan. Yes, exactly. The new normal. And that was a couple of years ago. He coined that term when the markets were somewhat volatile. Uh, because of all the rate hikes, I'm sorry, the fears of the Fed moving away from QE, if anyone remembers that term, which was hottest term ever, uh, and that meant quantitative easing. In other words, liquidity pumping into the economy in the form of buying up mortgage bonds and corporate bonds uh, and government bonds, which meant that the Fed was pumping money into the US economy. Well, they moved away from QE, you know. Two years ago, did the market collapse? It hit a new high. And if you look back at the headlines, Google, end of QE, market reaction, they said, that's it. That's the end of the bull market. The Fed's gone. We're going to collapse and die. We didn't. We're making new highs and we're going to continue to make some smaller new highs before we correct. Now, don't want to get too advanced on the economic side. So bottom line is that um, the bottom line is that the, it, this is structured randomness. So I'm going to write that term down, structured randomness, not random randomness. So in other words, things are falling. That's it. It's all over. We can't get out of it. The mess, you know, if we buy these tactical bottoms, we're all dead. No. In fact, the biggest money is made, as you all know, okay? On days that were down minus 300 points, we catch the tactical bottom even during the day. During those four or five, five, let's say next four hours, you are garnering and, and profiting and capturing anywhere from 200 to 300 percent specifically. Um, and but uh, I'm sorry, uh, generally, but not specifically on SPX RUT. It happens all the time in my service. And this is happening intraday. Now, though every day the market's not going down 300 points and rising and ending positive, markets are doing more like, okay, we're up 50, we are down 50, okay, down 50, then plus 50. These are good for 100%, easy. And these are numbers that I'm quoting based on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, not the S&P 500 down 300, in which case we're talking about a 2100 point drop. Markets won't allow that because limits will come in, circuit breakers, and the market will stop trading. That's called panic. If you see a 300 point drop on the thing, that means we, I hate saying this, that means there is another massive terrorist attack by a foreign power or terrorists. In the, on the U.S. or some sort of big war that broke out where they actually invaded the U.S. Yeah, my S&P 500 will probably drop 500 points or 3,000 points on the Dow within a matter of hours. That's a different story. I'd like to remind everyone I'm a survivor of 9-11, and trust me, I know what fear is. Okay? 
and I was what quarter of a mile away from it and left the building 15 minutes before it got hit so there you go so anyway the bottom line is that um, structured volatility so through this randomness comes large profits so for new beginners who are listening to this complete thing here the change the mindset that you have to change okay and that's so important that you listen to that terrific and i just came across it today um uh, uh, uh where is it trading and basketball the process of flexibility adapt to algo hft chart listen to the first 10 minutes because that covers the sports aspect of it how you got to play for the moment which is be in the trade and then adapt if necessary if you fail on that trade you move on the process has to continue that's how big wins happen big wins don't happen because you did one trade lost money sat back and said oh well i can't take this anymore no the process has to continue one you lost money two you're making money three you're making money and maybe at that point you take the profits out okay whichever the case you have to continue with the process that is so i just listened to it uh, uh um and this gentleman beth chart is his last name who coaches the biggest names on the basketball universe okay these hundred million dollar players is talking about speed i mean you got to be in the trade which is the now the present you got to focus on the process which is adapting or sticking with the trade both ways don't necessarily have to get out of one to get into another and you will see dollars or wins or results if you focus on the results right away from the initiation of the trade then the first drop that you get you're going to be blown out and here's coming from a guy who is getting paid big bucks from big 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 kahunas to teach them how to stay with the game and if you miss that shot you got to go back from playing offense to defense and the whole works listen to it i haven't listened to the whole thing yet to get a chance 10 minutes i listened to it, i said wow this is what i teach my people this is what i practice myself not to be all bummed out of my mind because Goldman Sachs misses numbers even though I had multiple positions doesn't matter Goldman Sachs misses numbers calls go from 4 to 40 cents down 90% and like oh my god my day shot no I immediately react and of course, I have other positions running. But let's say somebody doesn't have the capacity to have other positions running. You can sell that. You might. You have to have a little bit of cash on the side, even on smaller accounts. Get into another trade, which zooms higher. And I show this every single day. You could get into an Nvidia at forty cents, because this thing has is not just red hot, but it is very volatile and obviously on the upside. Or a Tesla which I've proven over and over again, you get in that at, let's say, 60 cents. Well, Tesla calls are not really 60 cents, more like one to three bucks. NVIDIA calls you can get for 60 cents. So let's call it one buck. Ride it to four because money is flowing away from this financials into these powerful techs. And Tesla goes from one to three dollars to five. Not only have you made back enough money, but you stayed with the process. You were flexible. And this loss that you had on Goldman Sachs, unless you put a whole kitty in there, which case nothing can ever help you. Okay. And you are coming out net net positive for the day. And what does that do for your PL? Well, not only does it make money, what does it do for your ultimate PL, which is your brain? Your ultimate PL or profit and loss is how you think, how you act, your ultimate and your confidence. So, your ultimate 
reservoir of money is not the physical money. It is your brain. Your ultimate PNL is your psychology, is your attitude, which is part of your thought process, your confidence. I'm going to just say confidence. You lose this, I don't care how much money you make on certain trades, your PL is going to go down, guaranteed. Now, is it not possible that a confidence shot a bunch of times? Sure. That's why you just don't focus on the result. You focus on the process, how, how to get there. And that process requires flexibility, not rigidity. Like, oh, if this didn't work, I'm going to stick with it. No, it's, you know, that's what retail traders do wrong all the time. A stock is a stock. It's a number. It doesn't care about you. It doesn't know you. It doesn't like whatever. So if you are down on something and that chart is not looking good and I'm not uh, uh, alerting on that thing by, you know, every, every uh, let's say, one hour or two hours, it's not that hard to figure out on which ones I like more because I'm, I'm tweeting those out more. So flexibility will lead you towards the numbers, not that one trade that didn't go back, uh, right. This is the ultimate, ultimate bane and fault and crutch for every retail traders out there. I can't change that for you you got to do it yourself listen to that video okay because that gentleman knows how to really speak i'm more direct giving you facts and actual stuff on the trading floor but that is serious stuff so you got to you know you cannot just you know you got to stick with the process the shot didn't work the trade didn't work got to move on you got to move on. You cannot keep on making stupid excuses to yourself because there are, all, there are so many trades in the market. You don't have to take each one of them. But you lose money on one, you can very easily, and I will say that, very easily adapt, put a little bit of extra money onto the next ones which are zooming. That's the market. There is money flowing from one sector to another, one stock to another during the day. and I. My strength is I pinpoint those very, very clearly. So that's, you know, that's what it really comes down to. The behavioral part I can't change. I'm showing you a process that's worked very well for me. And you guys have to focus on that. The more advanced coaching sessions obviously go into that very deeply in many, many different aspects. So for newer traders who are listening to this, um, who will be listening to this, um, charts so charts are as you can clearly see here i'm just stick i'm just going back to let's say the middle of the month okay so i'm going back to the middle of the month that's the 14. so what happened here the charts are actually very mechanical that's the reason why i can draw these beautiful lines these are straight lines right up and down downtrend lines channels this is actually a downtrend line why do i have it in blue it should be in red And this is a trading band. Put this out. And by the way, this is a free platform, right? Investing.com. Go play around with it yourself. Grab a nice beer. Grab a nice IPA, you know, a double IPA. Have some juice in it, you know. Don't just buy an IPA with like two percent alcohol. I'm just kidding. Um, so bottom line is, just you know, and just sit there and play with it. It's gonna make you more money between my help that I give, and what is and what is your ability to do it, which all of the, uh, us have ability, all of us. Okay, um, you're gonna be golden. So I just, within a couple of minutes, I just drew something which you can trade to kingdom come. You don't need to pay somebody $20,000, which some people have done. Read the testimonial that uh, a, a new member uh, uh, put out there, the initial BC. 
Okay. And I loved it. Not because, you know, he said, oh, wow, he's the best and this and that. But I like the way he wrote it. That shows real, you know, intellect. Be the lion, not the sheep. Right? He paid. And this is not him. I mean, there's other people, too. You go to Online Trading Academy, they charge you anywhere from twelve to $24,000 to learn basic frigging trading that does not work in these computer-driven markets. Not giving a marketing pitch on my ACS sessions, which is less than what you would pay a babysitter in many cases or a dog walker. It's a fact. Forget about going to a lawyer who charges $300 an hour. Okay, so he openly put it. I'm the guy who paid twenty four thousand in two thousand five to learn how to trade the markets the old way, and he subsequently gave it all back. And he talks about, and he's been kicking butt, by the way, overall. And he's no smarter than any of you guys who are, who's listening, who are listening. And I love this quote from Wyatt Earp. And if anyone knows who's a wide herb, please, please Google it. Okay. Should know. Fast is fine, but accuracy is final. Like we say in New York, dude, you got to hit the strike zone. That's what I do every single day, every single week with my tactical charts. What is tactical? It's another name for hitting the strike zone. If you're not hitting the strike zone, and imagine if I wasn't actually delivering by hitting the strike zone repeatedly. Then people have right to complain or feel really despair, like, oh, my God, this guy knows nothing. What am I doing here? I am hitting the strike zone to a level which is unbelievable to the point where I need to stick with my strike zone in many cases to the end. Because I like to take most of the profits in the middle and the upper end, but not to it till the end where most of the acceleration happens or some of the acceleration happens. So I'm evolving, but I'm far more robotic than anyone out there. So I love this. And this is something you should write down, all of you, and paste it on whatever you're looking at. Fast is fine, but accuracy is final. You've got to get there. And this gentleman, okay, basically, is uh, is 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 hitting the strike zone using my charts, and I'm proud of him. He's no smarter than any of you guys. He's got a day job, and he's trading part time, like like he's he we put right at the end. Read the testimonial. I'll put it up there. Obviously, it's public testimonial. So, bottom line is enough of excuses. It's time to really do it. Is it going to be hard work? Absolutely. Is it much easier because I put parameters down on every single trade on where it, where it's going to go, show the charts where it can hit? No. Nobody gave me these type of trade alerts when I was on other trading services years ago, many, many years ago. For the same amount of money that you guys are paying me a month, I used to get, in, I used to get a nice long-winded blog type of newsletter with a couple of charts from some people. Well, some guys were really, really good. One guy was such a frigging, he was actually an ex-NASA engineer. So his charts were so frigging complicated, I didn't understand anything other than the lines. The more I looked at it, the more I understood it. But he never went around explaining all through the day in the, in the, in the chat room. Uh, or, um, or, or, or through the video cast or anything like that. I never heard his voice. Did I learn from getting his newsletter, which was the same price as my subscription services? This is years ago. He's still around. No, he just draw a whole bunch of lines and stuff, and he said, this is what's going to happen. This is how I think it's going to happen. He has a pretty good high accuracy rate. I don't know how he's doing now, but that was it. But here, you're being coddled. You're being questions asked or answered within a very short period of time in the, in the, in the live chat room. And uh, so can't get any better than this. Seriously, when it comes to actual helping uh, 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 you guys uh, in 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 what's what you know in in managing the trades, eventually, I mean, the final thing is you got to manage your own trades. So um, 
So let's look at look go back. This is Dow Jones Industrial Average. I'm just showing you a naked chart. That's what a naked chart looks like. That's the that's basically the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the ultimate symbol of American economic superiority. Okay, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 300 points. Boom. Remember, the day we economically fall on the U.S. stock markets is the day we lose our power. I'm telling you that right now. We were, when the Dow Jones went all the way down back in 2007, 2009, the world was scared because we were scared. So if anyone gives me some other all kinds of political BS, okay, about, oh, you know, this goes, you know, this uh, Wall Street's really bad, the Federal Reserve's really bad, everything's really bad, capitalism's really bad. They're all stealing our money. It's really bad. Well, song and dance, go live somewhere else, honestly. In fact, there are no other communist countries left. China's not communist. They're fiercely capitalist. They're far more capitalist than we are. Russia, the ultimate bastion of Leninism and Marxism, is the ultimate ruthless capitalism that you have a deal with. State capitalism, but ruthless capitalism. The only cop capital, uh, even the North Korean regime is ruthlessly capitalist within their own framework of things, not the people, unfortunately. So there is no communist bastion or socialist bastion left. Yeah, maybe Venezuela, but that doesn't even work. So my point is, in the greatest nation in the world, you got to adapt to what we're doing and we move on. So here's a naked chart of the ultimate symbol of American Cap, uh, American power, which is economic power. Remember, you can be the smartest guy in the world and have no and have two cents in your pocket. Nobody's going to respect you. Same thing with trading. You don't make those killer trades and stuff. No one's going to look back at you. He's a really nice guy, you know. But you know, because this business is about performing, just the way sports is about performing. So when you perform and you win, and you're showing consistently great stuff. People are going to respect you. That's just the way it works. No two ways about it. So all the new uh, rookies who are listening to this, wake up. All right? No more excuses. Just got to go with it. Stay with the process. Change with as needed. Not like, oh, there's going to be a perfect time when everything's just going to go straight up. It never has been. I've been dealing with the U.S. stock markets in, uh, uh, since the 1996, 1997 periods. There has never been one single time where the market's gone straight up. Yes, spur, uh, uh, like spurts of it from this is obviously the elections, right? November elections when the market actually fell nine days in a row. And after hours, we actually went down almost 1,000 points on the Dow. And at, at around 100 points on the S&P 500, this is Dow Jones Industrial Average. This was after hours on the S&P 500. They locked it. Circuit breakers went in. I have the video on it live on my fantastic Clueless 8 YouTube channel. Go see it. Election night. And what I said in the subsequent days of what was going to happen. I used one word, which should be cop trademarked, copyrighted. We are going to see Brexit, which was the last major drop in the market back here when the UK uh, uh, referendum voted to its pulling out of the European Union, June 27th, back, back this way. Okay. I'm sorry, right here, here. This was Brexit. What am I saying? It's right there on my screen. My apologies. Right there, Brexit. I said after the second candle development and after what I saw, how the markets reacted in the following day, we went long. And I said, this is going to be Brexit on steroids. Brexit on steroids. This was Brexit. This was the good old UK. The world superpower for hundreds of years. The ultimate king and the queen, right? The queen. The commonwealth ruled half, no, good one quarter of the world. So I said, Brexit on steroids so for new beginners who are listening to this 
I'm just kind of recapping some very important things here. Not what I just said, but what markets do. So here was your Brexit and the big, nice, fat move up. This We played it like a fine violin. Not just buy it here and say, oh, it's definitely going to go up here. It's never like that. Trading is about taking profits along the way and sticking to the swing trade. Because there is no guarantee it was going to just break out of this uh, uh, a large inverse head and shoulder V formation and then go higher. Because most traders got in around these levels, non-clueless A traders. And guess what? They got walloped for the next couple of days as we had a consolidation channel. And basically, the market did nothing. And then came those nine days of incessant selling right before the elections, which is standard procedure. And the market was going to rally one way or the other, whoever won. It was going to be a relief rally. Well, Trump won. Very uh, business friendly. A world size is a sign of relief that, okay, the U.S. has a precedent, not a contested election, all that kind of stuff. And this was Brexit. And this is Brexit on steroids. I wouldn't suggest that you guys take steroids, but do take trading steroids called the clueless eight kind. Okay, this is Brexit on steroids. Continuing, continuation pattern. Still going a bit more higher. And if I, what the heck do I know? It might overshoot and we can go to 22,000, which is only 600. I'm sorry, 420 points away from here. And, 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 and the media and all of you retail traders, most of them are going to say, wow, I don't believe this. The market is on 22,000. What if the banks really wake up that have been kind of whimpering, you know, at, at kind of on the upper range? What about energies, which have been energy sector, which has been kind of scraping the ground? What if they wake up? And the Saudis decided that $60 oil, which they can do in one announcement overnight, the market is going to be up 400 points to 22,000 Dow Jones Industrial Average without you guys even blinking. Are you guys going to be ready for it? I hope so. I am. I walk people through it all the time saying all that. Am I crazy bullish? No. Am I buyers bullish for now? And am I tactically short here and there? Like these type of consolidations? Absolutely. But I want to point that point. Go listen to that video. It's going to change the way you look at trading and the markets. I did that video a couple of days after the elections. I think two nights after the election. Brexit on steroids. This. And that was your Brexit. Because we rule. The United States of America is the strongest economy in the world. Despite all our problems, we have the intellectual and the economic and the military capacity to be number one. The day we lose the economic uh, uh, capacity is the day everything else is going to fall. Okay. That's your quick lesson in the macro global stuff. So here's a chart. So we're going to just draw it. And we are going to go like this. We're going to say, and again, the only reason why these charts hit multiple points because technical analysis is all about hitting multiple points which has a symmetry so i'm i'm looking for symmetry so i can i i like this there are multiple contact points quite simple now to me it comes it doesn't come naturally it's a lot of practice that i've been doing for years so i kind of drew this real fast so here's your night before the elections it's like that movie night before you know a night at the museum, right? Or something like that it was. So so you have an intermediate channel here, which moves you up to the 22,400 level. Multiple contact points. One cluster here. Not perfect, but good enough to draw a technical line. And look how the market does it. Like, unbelievable. Kisses it bounces upper end of the channel is this you don't need to be a rocket scientist to draw this trust me and you can go like this and say okay i'm going to draw another parallel channel just like that and this is what it comes to now take a look at this chart i'll be back in about 15 seconds
Okay, I'm back. So one of the simple observations that I want to make, which should be, which I can, what's called cognitive bias, and all new members and rookie traders who listen to this, listen carefully. I'm not here to change your attitude, how you look at your life, whether you see the glass half full or the glass half empty, or whether you think that you know the stock market's going to crash uh, every single week, that it's going higher. Uh, you listen to every bearish guy who's out there saying buy puts, buy puts, buy puts, short price line. I mean, short tactical trading, you can short anything for an hour and make two or three points. Are you fast enough? Are you, you know, do you have enough money to do that type of stuff? That's a different story. Um, I short too. Uh, which I post out there. Um, so that's not my point. My point that I want to make with this type of thing, when you look at this chart and you show it to a three-year-old kid, or let's say a four-year-old kid, how about a five-year-old kid? Okay. Does it really look like we're going into a massive crash and a fall? Yes or no? Guys? Nope. Exactly. So what is the key point about the, the question that I asked you? Uh, uh, and thank you for answering, is the bias. It's called the cognitive bias. When it comes to the world, you're very enthusiastic. You're excited about your job. You're excited about the sports that you that you follow or what you do, whether you're a runner, whether you're a basketball player, whether you like you know throwing hoops or, or, or going out there playing tennis or, or golf, whatever. You're excited about it. But when it comes to the stock market, it always seems like, oh, the market can't go higher. It's just going to crash. Am I right or wrong? I know I'm right, so I don't even need an answer. I know I'm right. So bottom line is there is no real bullishness in the market. None. Trust me when I tell you. And it's been the case not just since the elections right here. It has been the case since 2009 when the, uh, when the uh, S&P 500 uh, was at uh, 667. I can't even remember what the Dow was. I think it was 7,000. Dow's here hitting 23,000 and people are still, excuse my French, completely S, like completely censored, scared. So the, the key thing about traders are that they need to have a cognitive bias is what, what we know. And it's not something easy to change. If you're generally a pessimist, don't be a trader. Just don't. Bearish traders in general, in the history of the U.S. stock market for the last 100 years plus, have made nothing. I mean nothing. Yes, there have been sports where there have been big corrections, big macro corrections, 2007, 2009. There are going to be big macro corrections like that. And you think that was easy? Jim Paulson made close to $4 billion or something like crazy. Look him up. John Paulson in his fund. He couldn't sleep at night. Watch the big short. You don't make that type of money because you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to short it. It's all going to be easy, peachy. No, because the markets were, when they were crashing, they would do three, 400 point type of moves. He wouldn't know. The Fed was step, stepping in with liquidity programs, other stuff going on. And then eventually the, the housing market really collapsed and he made a lot of money. Read his book. Just the same thing with traders in a smaller way. If you are truly bearish, then try to scalp these type of consolidation channels. But in a rising market, it doesn't really pay the bills. I know it personally because even when technicals went somewhat bearish over a short period of time, and if I held my short position too long, toast. Toast. Because the market has a significant amount of juice to go higher. And looking at these channels here, it's pretty clear that even if it reaches the upper end of the channel, which would be, in my opinion, a, great, a solid shorting opportunity, it can probably go like this and still bounce. Remember, this is the upper channel, right? So I'm going to put U or up channel. This is the lower channel, meaning like, well, you know what I'm saying. This is the, uh, the lower channel. This is the upper channel. We're not even close to the upper channel. This is all technical stuff. It's visual. Here we ramped up right after the elections. Great positive vibes from U.S. business, enthusiasm in the country, like, okay, we have a new regime in power and everything. And we basically jumped into the off the middle channel and touched almost the upper end of the channel. This is it. Okay, pull back, try to bounce, hit the highs back in March. Right? And then kind of meandered and did nothing. 
So the bottom line is I'm talking about the Dow Jones Industrial Average here. So if you want to look at it, so where we are right now and we are truly overvalued or not, why don't you why don't you do this? Take this, click horizontal line and put it like this. So basically this was back on March. This was the breakout in June. And we are here. Does this look like a massive overvaluation of the market? In my opinion, no. All we did was zigzag around, massive trading that we did, very profitably, double bottom, all kinds of good stuff. Came back, tried to retest this big. This is actually not a red line. This is, this is. Uh, I should draw it as a green, very thick line because this was a big, big breakout which at this point becomes a major support level, right? Because you broke out of it. We just broke out of it just within the past month. And now we are here. So does this move here connotate a massive overvaluation? We just basically just, just went above where we were in March. People don't think like that because people are people. We think like that because we are technical chartists. So we just broke out. So all of a sudden, we're going to completely break down? Sure, anything can happen. Of course, anything can happen. But I'm just saying from a technical standpoint, no. We can come down here and lose 2,100, 136, 21,560. You're talking about 400 points. We can lose 400 points in the Dow. The media is going to scream like it's the end of the world. And all it's going to be is a retest of this before we bounce again. Unless something really rotten is going on in the credit markets overseas and here, and the credit market means banks and financials and stuff like that, some big thing going on in the housing market, which I doubt it, okay? Then we're going to fall back towards this range again. But in the meantime, I just want you guys to focus on simplicity. We just broke out in June, and we are here. Does this look like, you know, we should have been going higher if we didn't have this nice pullback from February down here. Okay, so what if we continued higher? We would be up here. So we didn't really do much for months and months. And what now we finally broke out and the market is basically creating what we call in the technical terms, a bull flag or a bull consolidation channel. So what the biggest thing you need to get out of this final thing that I'm going to mention is you need to have a bias. Do you believe that the market is constantly going to crash? In which case, every trade you are going to do what? If your bias is constantly bearish or down for every trade, when they're ripping higher day after day after day, you are going to be out of the trade because you'll be selling for peanuts. Yes or no? Yes, um, surf. If your bias is bearish, let me answer this question. Then traders will basically take peanut profits. Traders will sell every small move. If your bias is bearish, then retail traders will do it all the time. Will sell every small move. And never, and this is in multiple stocks, and you guys know very well, never make larger dollars on swing trades because they're not monitoring, focusing on the uptrend charts that I'm putting across based on what we're seeing right now. So if you're not a tactical trader, you're not looking at my charts, which I'm drawing with ultimate uh, precision, accuracy, like they say, accuracy is final. Strike zone. The strike zone is where I'm always hitting, upside and downside, repeatedly, every single day, telling you where the markets can fall, where they can rise, and over a swing braces. Because you're not focusing on the strike zone, you're missing out on any large trades and you're making make maybe making like a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, not buying these tactical lows, not holding as we are breaking out because you're like, oh my God, the markets can't go higher. Well, the voice in your head never made you rich in trading. The voice in your head basically is a, is, is a complete idiot. 
the voice in my head when I'm, you know, uh, uh, if I listen to my voice in the head all the time, I'd be a complete idiot. Thank God I don't because I rely on my charts and I have to change my mindset. You have to change your mindset. You have to look at my charts that I'm putting across the bigger charts on the markets. You have to look at the trades that I'm putting through and then you got to decide what you need to do. It doesn't mean that if you, if you get a big move like that, you, you're not supposed to sell. Of course, you're supposed to sell. There's no guarantee that it's going to basically just continue to go higher. You can always re-enter flexibility, adapt to the situation. So let me just answer a question that uh, um, uh, B. Badger just asked. He goes, investing.com, does it save your charts or do you have to rebuild each time? It saves your charts. You just hit this arrow right here, right there. Save chart, saves, you know. So you go like this, and I'm going to put this as Dow Jones Industrial DJIA Training 1. How about that? Save. So now it's saved. Now you want to download that chart. You look down. I have lots of them here. Dow Jones Training Average. Here's the one that has been the ultimate money maker for us. But people know how to read it, the breakout level, where we are, how we turn on Friday, right exactly. Can't get any better than this. If you don't know what, what, really uh, understand lines, straight lines, then look at my green thumbs. How about that? I can't make this any easier. Look at the red thumb. This is going to be the big sell point right here somewhere up there in the next couple of days. Next week, maybe right after uh, July end. Okay? Look at the green thumbs, both on the underlying uh, internals as well as here. Here with the channels that I had drawn. I don't make up these channels after the fact. These these charts are drawn to precision before it happens. So when I said the market was going to basically get towards the upper end, hit hit a roadblock, I didn't expect three uh, red candles. Fine, we got it. But right when people were panicking, it was the turn point, and we made 60, 70 percent on those SPX calls without too much effort, just for two hours, 50% plus. All you have to do was buy my buy my thing, and you don't even have to analyze this chart because I'm putting the trade alerts out there. But look how precise they are. This is not some random chart. The randomness is in these each of these candles, but look at the structure. If we break the 2451 level, well, that's different. That's a, that's what we call a trend change. If we just suddenly fall like this, we will immediately, in my opinion, break and fall towards 2440. Not the end of the world, but it's all technical. So I'm going to take one or two other questions, and we're going to wrap this up because I want to keep it short and straight to the point. I do highly suggest, very strongly, that all of you listen to this to this video okay the process and flexibility listen to the first 10 minutes listen to 15 minutes this is a uh, one that i did with a brand new member for everyone's listening if they want to hear read the testimonials if you want motivation from somebody who just came in and doing tremendously well read this okay what I talked about, the VIX in one of my ACS, that people say, oh, the VIX is so low. You hear the media. Everyone's complacent. Everyone's complacent. Everyone's scared shit. Excuse my French. Okay? Every time the market drops 40 points, there's silence. And this tells you the truth, not the fake news, the real news. This gentleman wrote this piece. I was amazed. The quietest market in decades is masking big money-making opportunities. What more can I say? Hats off to this gentleman. This is the face of an algo that wants to eat you alive when you're doing emotional trading. Okay? The candlestick pattern found this. I thought it was brilliant. I even listened to it. It was a very simple robotic voice explaining different candlestick patterns. And, of course, my charts and stuff are all there. So I'm, I'll answer one or two quick questions, and then I'm going to wrap up. We will have an advanced coaching session, depending on the attendance, which I believe we should have approximately around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. That's obviously going to be much more in-depth, and we'll get an idea of how the futures are trading and what's going on. Global markets will be reacting to news over the weekend, which really there wasn't much. Okay? So um, any questions? Um, Brian, Mike? 
Yeah, uh, I do have one. Go ahead. So a lot of time. Yeah. So looking at this chart that, um, that you have up right now, like you said, these lines are drawn to precision. Yeah, but, they are. I didn't say. It, I didn't say they are. They are. They um, are. But just to clarify, right? Yeah. Actually, for some of the newer beginners too, that doesn't necessarily mean that these, you know, the S and P five hundred is going to hit that the next day. It could be next week. It could be down the line. Okay, so here's the answer. Some point, here's, right? here's the answer to your question. Given the volatility in the market and the speed of how markets move, how long do these movements take? The answer to your question lies in the dates, which are right below you. It's a very good question. Okay, you don't have to wait weeks. So this was this was uh, this was the big drop, right? The big a uh, 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 nice fat drop back to the 2400. Um, and what date was that, uh, Brian? Look at the date. I'm showing it to you. So just read it to me. Yeah, June 29th, 2017. Correct. We bought these tactical massive, massive, um, beautiful opportunities, hammer reversal. You can see the hammer reversal. You know those by now, right? Like this, correct? Correct. 1 o'clock, 1 p.m., the 29th. Where did we reach on the 3rd? And believe me, this was, this was, uh, this was the weekend. This was the weekend, 30th and 31st, um, 29th, 30th, and, uh, and then the 1st and the 2nd. and july 4th was a holiday so from here to here was how many days forget about going here from here to here immediately the same day was a good hundred percent on your money here to here and i keep kept on repeatedly saying do not ever short july 4th week, uh, weekend well it wasn't a weekend it was a monday right we were closed on tuesday correct correct M monday was a half day so how long did it take I want you to answer your own question. From the 29th, 1 o'clock, till 1 o'clock on the 3rd, how many days was that? Actual business days. Actual business days? It's, yes. It was three actual business Yeah. Two uh, and a half it, actual business days. Thank you very much. So that answers one of your questions about speed and accuracy, okay? Now, these are extremely volatile moves. I cannot predict what's going to happen in the next 15, 20 minutes, even though we trade them during the day. So I will agree with you on that. But then at the same time, when we have these climactic waterfall declines, okay, the next one we had was on what? Look at the date. Uh, look, once we came back from work, July 5th. The 5th, exactly. And that, that culminated in a low on the 6th, correct? 2 p.m.? Yes. So you're talking another one day. I drew these lines here. Uh, uh, this line was already drawn, okay, because uh, uh, we had, uh, um, what do you call it? You know, I just, I, I had this line drawn because that was the uh, last high that we could get to. We had, a, I have a downtrend line drawn here. And from this drop here on the 6th, we reached exactly, exactly. We broke through the downtrend line, which is this red line. And we were trying to get to where we were before the drop. We didn't quite make it there, and that was the, what date was that? The 10th of July. The 10th of July. So basically, this is the 6th. Remember, there's a weekend in the middle, 8th and 9th, um, 4th, 5th, 6th, what day? Uh, yeah, like uh, 9th and 10th were holidays. No, not 9th and 10th. Let me look at the calendar. So we'll put this in perspective. So July. Okay, the weekend was 8th and 9th, okay? Remember, this is a futures chart, so it's all kind of attached together because futures trade, you know, uh, after hours and stuff. So bottom line is from here to here, it took another two days. Another two days. Then the market went into a trading range and decided to basically do this. This was the ultimate buying opportunity. I told people that straight out. And do you remember what this was? What was this, this drop? Sudden drop after we were nicely moving higher, bullish candle. All of a sudden, the market dropped at 11 a.m. That on 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 the 11th. Is that the uh, Donald Jr. and the that's the right Russian lawyer? That's right. And I said they're going to brush this off. I saw the hammer reversal drawing. I told people to stay long. From this point on, my lines are drawn to perfection. At this point, the parallel channels are all drawn. Okay. They, at, at this point, my channels are drawn because they're already there. 
And then once Donald Jr., dis, uh, the, the reversal candle, uh, the hammer reversal happened, don't undermine. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to everyone else who's going to listen to this. Do not ever estimate the power of a hammer reversal. If you think that's a construction term, you're highly mistaken. A hammer reversal looks like a Chinese firecracker, like that. Long tail, body up here. Listen to the candlestick pattern. It'll all explain very clearly. In fact, that video is so amazing. Like I said, I loved it. I want to listen to it again. Hammer reversals are to be bought. That's it. Because you're going to make money in the next couple of hours and within the next day or so. High probability money. So when the market went from 24 from the lows of uh, roughly retesting this triple lows, I even said that, that it's close to a triple low. You can see that. Look. One, two, three. Almost there, not quite there. Perfect. Immediately, the algos went to work, knowing that that was going to be a no, uh, what's it called? Nothing burger story. And, and then from, the, uh, from uh, uh, the 11th of July, massive short squeeze on the following day at the open, at the open. It's not mentioned that we took profits along the way here too. So again, this was how many hours? From 11 a.m., market closes at 4, right? So that's four hours. And then the, and you go to bed at night with a couple of long positions, especially SPX and RUT, and you hit at, at the market open. You're up 42 points. I'm sorry. You're up 30-some points on this. Your calls are up 300 to 400%. So question is that when you see these movements in answer to your original question you're talking about a matter of four hours to maximum 24 hours before each of my levels are hit that's a straightforward truth this is not a week i'm not showing you charts that are for weeks and weeks because you know what it's not going to make you any money because you guys don't have the mental capacity most of you, to do a swing trade, betting that the market is going to fall on the second week of August. What if it doesn't? I still believe we're going to get a sizable correction by, uh, in the second week of August, a quick one. And then we're going to get a sizable correction in September and early October. But what if everybody's thinking like that? Then the market would just won't let it happen. And in between those corrections, and you know that, Brian, better than anyone else, or I certainly know better than anyone else, that if you stay long, if you stay short for that long, chances are you're going to lose all your money. So I live, I'm, I'm playing the now, which is the present. Listen to that basketball coach video. Playing the now. You got to be in the now. You got to keep an eye out for what is going on on the bigger picture. But you got to play in the now in order to make the money. I'm not talking five-minute trading. And you got to play the game. So in answer to your question, that when can this upper Bollinger hit? Right tonight when the markets, the futures open. Happens all the time. 2480, are we really asking for much? We are in the last uh, few days of July. Fund managers are scrambling to add names to their portfolios that they missed out on. Believe me, there's a lot of funds who are uh, mutual funds mom and pops who don't have the big names in their portfolio still trust me there are we have google we have uh, uh, we have facebook we have amazon for god's sakes three of the finest companies in the world reporting are they all going to be up right after that no but <laughs> will, 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 will a majority of them really blow the sky high like we did with netflix absolutely the number is going to be phenomenal what's google going to say oh nobody's searching anymore Online advertising is dead. Everyone's going back to the yellow books. Come on. What the, case, the point that I made is that most traders in general have absolutely no idea how powerful this market is. I've been on Wall Street. I stand by it. I love Wall Street. I think I learned so much from it about myself and think people in Wall Street are so bearish. Most analysts on Wall Street are super bearish right now. So in answer to your question, was time frames? very fast couple of days that's the direct answer okay 
couple of days or within hours movements are fast and furious you can see that clearly from this chart upper end of this level could be met as early as monday 2469 to 2481 is 11 points i'm sorry 12 points what's 12 points in dow jones terms roughly 72 dow points can't we get 72 drop points you know any thoughts on how to trade facebook tomorrow yeah follow my lords facebook's going higher okay mike says a very simple question in fact this is a true beginner's video on how to trade facebook yeah how you know how do you trade facebook you buy facebook and you sit on it i've been saying that for months now facebook is going to face rip the shorts now will it can it suddenly drop after hours then rise sure it can but it's going to kill the shorts their numbers are i believe in my opinion given what i see facebook will most probably will basically go up 20 dollars that's a high probability bet does that mean you shove all your money into it no but small gets big netflix options that we bought at seven dollars opened up at 24 climbed to 36 on friday want to make real money got to be in the game play now listen to that video on that note i highly suggest two videos you got to listen to okay the first one and i'm going to pull in my twitter feed right in here um oops the first one is right there which i just posted just love it honestly and I'm not into like sports, uh, like coaching and stuff like, oh, you know, because it's the same old. But this guy just said it the way it is. Trading and basketball, the process and flexibility. Those are my words. Adapt to Algo HFT chart. That's that's my pitch on, on the market. Listen to the first 10 minutes. It's going to blow your mind because this is what I've been teaching, coaching, practicing myself for years now. Then definitely scan what. Mr. Brian, you know, the, 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 what the new member is doing and, and then read this so that all the lies about the VIX complacent, everyone's all happy, all lies. Show me one trader who's really happy. My performance has been very strong. Am I really happy? Far from it. And you guys forget it. Okay. You guys are. The most of you guys, I'm not talking about all of you guys, but most of you guys are in a state of despair. Who was the one who said it? Most men live in a state, uh, in, 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 in a, uh, uh, most men live a life of desperation secretly. I think, was it Oscar Wilde? Or somebody said that. It's a famous quote. Well, most traders live a life of quiet desperation. That's what the quote was. Most men live a life of quiet desperation. Okay? So, time to get out of it. And then, candlestick signals and patterns. That's all I can tell you. Biggest thing you can ever do to help yourself to increase your profits and stay in the game. On that note, um, I shall see you guys at around 8 p.m. on the ACS session. Going to go over some uh, real uh, technical stuff, heavy duty. People who are not advanced coaching session members, um, please do sign up. Don't pay $24,000, okay? Don't pay $24,000 to sit for online trading academy or whatever it is. I'm not defaming anyone, okay? The defamation suit will arrive at Clueless A Trading's door, okay? All these great services are going to teach you the method. Learn the process of what is now, which is machine-driven trading. Don't need to be a rocket scientist. You need to understand what I'm putting through on my charts. Got to use your own mental discipline to stick with the trade. Small gets big. Small gets big. I'm delivering 150, 200, 300, 400 percent type of returns consistently. Why do you need to even put big money on those type of trades? Do a series of these things. Not every one of them is going to be right immediately, but if you do the right thing and sit with it or shift it to the next week, that's called flexibility. You will get there. And if something's not working out, like a like a, a Chipotle trade, which worked out tremendously on the first day, and then the rats started falling off the roof on the next day, you're out of the thing. And I went short a little bit with a little bit of money because the weekly charts looked horrible. Can it turn? Sure it can, but I'm a technical anal uh, a chartist. It's showing me 325. That's how you got to do it. Have a great evening, guys. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks, Frank.